This is 7 News High School Red Zone. Hi everybody, welcome into the show. Week 5 in the High School Red Zone and welcome over if you joined us on Channel 7 as well. Another great night around the area. Some really compelling games to show you. Let's start out with a battle of unbeatens at Powdersville, which in its decade of playing football had never beaten two 5A teams in the same season, let alone face two from the highest level in the Palmetto State. But the Hillcrest Rams were in town and so was Todd Summers. And here's the recap. It's a battle of unbeatens in Powdersville as the Patriots play host to the Rams. First quarter, third and goal. Logan Cauldron goes straight ahead for a three-yard touchdown. Hillcrest leads 7-0. Early second quarter, Eli Hudgens throws to the back corner of the end zone, and Kyle Rice makes a leaping grab for a 19-yard touchdown. Powdersville cuts the Hillcrest lead to 10-8. Just over eight minutes to go in the second quarter. Bennett Judy hooks up with running back Thomas Staley for a six-yard touchdown. Hillcrest up 17 to eight. Just under five minutes to go in the half. Hudgens finds his running back Thomas Williams out of the backfield in the future. Virginia Tech Hokey does the rest with some impressive moves in the open field on his way to the end zone for a 34-yard touchdown. Patriots cut the Rams lead to 17-15. Under 30 seconds to play in the half. Third and long, Eli Hudgens airs it out and Thomas Williams makes a leaping grab at the two yard line and fights in for a 45 yard touchdown. Paddlesville leads Hillcrest 22-17 at the break. First play of the second half, Eli Hudgens throws deep across the middle with Ram defensive back Grant Holiday picks it off and returns it into Patriots territory. Several plays later, the Rams go for it on fourth and goal. Bennett Judy throws across the middle. The ball goes off the hands of linebacker Jalen Rambert and into the hands of Nylon Harris for a three-yard touchdown. Hillcrest back on top, 24-22. Just over four minutes to go in the third. Bennett Judy has all day to throw. Goes deep and hits Avery McFadden in stride for a 64-yard touchdown. Rams up 31-22. Just over six minutes to go in the game. Thomas Williams goes straight ahead, makes several defenders miss on his way to the end zone for a 19-yard touchdown. Patriots cut the Rams lead to 31-28. Just over four minutes to go. Ben and Judy drops back, pump fakes, rolls right, hits Gavin Flores for a six-yard touchdown. Judy's fourth TD pass of the night. Rams up 37-28. Eli Hudgens calls his own number for a short TD with just over a minute to go, but it's not enough as Hillcrest holds off Powdersville. Final score, 37-35. Powdersville is a great football team. Won 16 in the last 17, they're winners. That's why we're here to see if we're winners and if we can compete with a bunch of winners. And Coach Muster does a great job, and uh, I could be prouder right now. In Powdersville, for the high school red zone, I'm Todd Summers. It really is a great road win for Hillcrest. Other action for you, Burns in a seven-point game at the half at Winless Wren. 14-7 Rebels. They get it going, though. In the third quarter, Colby Shaw and Kai Cook get together. That starts out a drive. Shaw, 247 in the air, three touchdowns. There's one of them, R.J. Livingston, on his way to the end zone. Later on, Shaw and Cook again, a nice combination. Set up a Livingston short run for a touchdown, and Burns is 5-0. They enter the game averaging about 49 a contest. They get close to that number with most of the damage done in the second half. Dorman trying to go 4-0, coming off an open date. They were in York County against Brian Lane and Clover. Look at the interception by Ladrico McCullough. Denying Clover points, then Demarius Foster on a night when he gains 109 yards. Big burst right there, taking it to the house. Dorman had a 28-17 lead in the third. Kendall Lewis later got into the end zone. Cavs are absolutely outgained in total yards by 115, but they've got the right number where it counts. Dorman winning for a fourth time without a loss under Dustin Curtis, 37-23. Spartanburg's Vikings have played an NFL schedule at this point in the season, going at it against Riverside, and the Vikings took out their wrath on the Warriors. Raheem Jeter to Andrew Danton in the third, then Dreek Carter on a 15-yard score. Vikes were rolling. Rakeith Kelly, big run, put his team inside the 15-yard line. Jeter to Kamari Cunningham, set up another score. And Spartanburg rolls on to the win. They're 10-0 all-time against Riverside. 59-25 is your final score. Gaffney and Northwestern. Northwestern number two in the state, putting up huge numbers. Coming into the game, averaging 62 points against a 1-2 Gaffney team. But again, the name Gaffney's on the jersey. That was Jaden Sims with the interception. That stifled a Northwestern drive. Grayson Loftus and Drew Medley get together. Sweet music right there and a 7-0 Tribe lead. Andrew Rooplater comes up with a big fourth down stop. Deep in Indians territory. 
Gaffney gets the ball back on downs. Loftus, an amazing little John. He was just that. And how about the Indians on the road? They get the 28 to 7 win. That's four wins in the last five against a good Northwestern team. Westside's Rams are maybe going to be the talk of 4A when it's all said and done. They've cranked it up over the last few weeks, trying to take down another 5A tonight as they go at it against Malden. Cutter Woods and Katie McGowan. Great run down to the Mavericks' two yard line. Set up a Woods touchdown as Westside was able to build a third quarter lead to 28 to 7. Into the end zone goes Woods. Jamison Wilson later coming through with a pick six and the Rams on their way to another victory. They managed just 17 points in their first ball game of the year. They have scored 110 in the three games since. They cruise past Malden. Greenville and Mann, great rivalry showdown. What an atmosphere at the home of the Patriots. A packed house to see these two go at it. Greenville was trying to make it eight straight in the series. Mann is vastly improved. That was Ethan Anderson finding Michael McClellan late in the opening quarter. A little hop step to get an extra few yards. Early second, though, Anderson throwing it. Wrong guy gets in the way of it. Keyshawn Robinson with the Greenville interception. Red Raiders up 7-6 to six at that point. Bryson Drummond later in the second. Mazio Bennett is going to run right by Clemson's wide receiver coach who was there checking him out and had to be impressed. 80 yards in the score, 14-6 to six Greenville. And then Drummond to Tyler Brown. And look at the moves. This guy's headed to Minnesota. Hope they know what they're getting. They're getting a special talent. Into the end zone he goes, and Greenville makes it eight straight and 10 out of 11 in the series. They move on to the 49-6 win. In the Lakelands, Greenwood trying to make it back-to-back -back wins, but they had to face a tough foe in Hannah. Greenwood just a few years back had a 16-game winning streak against Kenneth Fretwell's team, but look at the juke and a 28-yard run down to the two. He took it in to make it 7-0 Hannah. Jalen Bowles then gives Hannah a 14-0 advantage for that short touchdown. Kayla Burton tries to get the Eagles back in it. 23-yard pass to J.B. Simmons to cut the Hannah lead to 14-7, to but it's not enough. Hannah's now won five of the last seven in the series after that long Greenwood winning streak. 31-14 is the final. Keep an eye on the easily green wave. You know, the West Side Rams and others in 4AR, they were trying to get to 3-1 and, and get in the way of Woodmont, which had been in control the series of late. Caleb Sutton and Will Patton right there. And look at the nice work by Patton to get the extra yards. Then Sutton to Chris Clemens. That's another first down as the wave was driving in the third. Here's Sutton. Tough yards to get into the end zone and give his team a 36 to 14 advantage. And the wave gets the win. They improved to three and one. Coming up, we've got the action from Inman where the Red Devils were trying to make it happen against a team that's been a thorn in their side. We'll show you if they were again on fire as the high school red zone rolls on.